a little mini garden tour to show you some of the things we've got going on, what died in the frost, and then the things that are continuing to grow and continuing to be harvestable. You could see lots of greens, especially kale and collards, but also some other greens like radicchio and uh, lettuce. And then also the root vegetables are the other main category of things that can stay in the ground. And I've got some um, big watermelon radishes here that I'm gonna pull out. Even when the temperatures get cold, your garden isn't done. There's still a lot of food out here. And if you know what's frost tolerant and what's not, you can harvest it a little bit later, just so you can have fresh food from your garden uh, into November and even December. All right, so it's November in the garden and we've had a couple of frosts, not a really big, deep killing frost that's frozen the ground yet but um, definitely some below zero temperatures that have left things pretty icy and the first to go always I find is the nasturtiums so you can see these amazing ghostly white nasturtiums have just basically been um, completely turned into mush it's pretty amazing what a little bit of a cold temperature will do but it's also amazing how many things withstand that cold temperature and even thrive so behind me also, I've got a bed that I covered up a little bit because I wanted to just keep it a little bit warmer um, and keep the frost off. And frost is actually something that's going to like physically move across the ground. Um, it comes from sort of one side of your garden and you can see uh, if you come out in the early morning sort of areas that are frosty and areas that aren't. So something like this row cover will just um, sort of keep the cold air away from the plants at least uh, for a little while. So under here you can see I've got um, quite a bit of kale and some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller ones, and then I've got quite a bit of lettuce as well. So these are plants that um, you can see have a certain amount of cold hardiness. They're actually doing pretty well considering um, it's been down below zero quite a few nights in the last uh, two weeks. So that's awesome. Also over here, we'll notice I've still got some beets and carrots in the ground. So. The beet greens are looking a little bit floppy here, like they've definitely been hit by the frost, but the carrots, um, they look all right, and uh, none of these are going to be harvested. So one of the things that keeps plants from freezing is the sweetness of sugar molecules that are in their leaves or in their roots or in different parts. So these beets and carrots are actually looking pretty good, and I can keep these for a little while uh, longer in the garden, even probably up until the winter when the frost freezes the ground solid and at that point it can be hard to get them out of the ground because the ground is actually solid and in a raised bed like this um, it's going to freeze a little bit before the actual ground freezes so I have to be aware of that but I'm going to put a layer of insulating um, straw on top and then that's going to keep the cold off of them a little bit and uh, it's going to mean that they don't freeze as solid. Um, it doesn't really matter if the greens freeze at this point, like they still have a green color so they're still photosynthesizing in the sun and maybe there's a little bit of growth happening underground but really this is about growing the beets and carrots to a point that they look good um, and that they're big enough to eat and then sort of saving them in the garden. It's almost like this is like outdoor cold storage at this point. So over here is another bed that's seen quite a few frosty nights but it really looks pretty good. Um, actually, the kale is growing better than it has been. I've been struggling to grow kale in this bed all summer. Uh, I planted it quite a while ago in the midsummer, and it just sort of sat there and didn't really do anything. But um, in the last, uh, I'd say month, it's really taken off and it's growing really fast. So kale's like a uh, more mild temperature than the hot summer. Um, so they're doing really well. Also, this dill is doing pretty great. And you can see dill has a certain amount of frost tolerance as well. So at some point, it's gonna get too cold and this is going to be done but right now it's uh, looking really great and I'd say um, maybe I'm going to put a cover over this because that would actually prolong it a little bit longer and I mean we're uh, on the 4th of November right now so in our zone you know we're p way past our last frost date and um, it's going to be interesting just to see how how the temperatures are going to play out um, as well I've got this alyssum that I've planted in here um, alyssum is a really great plant for pollinators and to attract beneficial insects of insects of all kinds but I was hoping especially for the beneficial insects because um, these are collard greens and the collard greens really get attacked the same with the kale by the cabbage worms uh, halfway through the halfway through the summer. So whether it's the cabbage white butterflies or another kind of cabbage worm, um, they just lay their eggs 
all over the undersides and the little caterpillars can just like completely skeletonize a plant. So luckily they're done for the year. That's one nice thing about shoulder season gardening is that when it's a little bit colder out, the uh, the pests often go away, especially like the soft body caterpillars, like those guys can't survive in the cold weather. So they're done for the year. Collards are doing really awesome right now. They're getting really thick. We like to cook these. So this is a green you would eat cooked, um, not raw because it can be pretty tough, but uh, super beautiful. And so they're thriving in this uh, cooler weather. Also over here, we've got some winter thyme. And this thyme is a perennial plant. I grew these from seed last year and they did so well. And what's cool about this is that it's an evergreen. So this is gonna stay uh, nice and green all winter long. You could even come out and harvest it all winter long. You're not even gonna really notice that the frost hits it. It's not gonna continue to grow or flower, but it's not gonna really change at all. Um, we've got some other perennials here, some black eyed Susans. Those guys are done for the year, but I'm always amazed at how much the birds love the seed heads. You'll see the yellow finches halfway through this, halfway through the winter, discover them all of a sudden and just, uh, just be feasting on them. So I'm waiting for that to happen. And so one of the hardest things I find it to say goodbye to the edible flowers. So here I tried to save some calendula. Um, looks like they're starting to get frosty, but um, calendula has so much oil in it that I find they, they usually will withstand a couple of frosts. Um, they're, they're pretty good and they're pretty hardy. Um, the flowers will open all the way when it's sunny out and then they'll close up again. And you can see the flowers are open where they were underneath the row cover. So that's pretty cool. I've also got a lot of cilantro. So cilantro is a pretty cold hardy one. And again, this is a plant that loves to grow in the colder season. It's not a big fan of the heat of the summer. So I find often it struggles. We've also got a lot of radicchio. So I planted these from seed just kind of as an experiment halfway through the summer and they're starting to make some heads but I think not sure they're actually going to make it that much further but I've been harvesting the outside leaves and they're quite beautiful uh, a little bit bitter and they're a nice a nice complement to like the crispy um, ice queen lettuces icebergs that we've been growing so they go well with that um, just kind of complement the flavors. And here you can see there's a lot more uh, nasturtiums that have died. And then we've got some fennel sprouting from the roots and a little bit of arugula too. So the arugula I planted from seed quite a while ago. Uh, arugula I find really impossible to grow in the summer because the flea beetles just go totally crazy for it. So it's a nice one to plant in the spring and the fall so you can try and uh, avoid those pests. And you can see there's beautiful arugula leaves with absolutely no flea beetle damage, which is amazing because in the summer they would just be like completely eaten. And then we've got our edible flower bed behind us. The corn flowers are still hanging on, but uh, they're not doing too much. Also the marigolds got pretty much frosted. There's some flowers hanging on, but again, the plants have pretty much completely been killed by frost. Snapdragons haven't. These guys are pretty cold hardy and they're doing all right. The flowers have started to be killed by frost, but the plants are still going. Last year I tried moving some snapdragon plants inside and using them in there, but they didn't really work. They got aphids really badly, so I gave up on them. And then you can see beans are definitely one of the ones that are susceptible to frost. These guys are like totally dead. The leaves are almost pulverized. Um, there's still some beans hanging out on here that were really too big to harvest, but they've got really soft. Whereas peas have a different, decent amount of frost tolerance. So you can see these pea shoots look really good, but I think it's too cold for them to flower. So if I had planted these a little bit earlier, they probably would have flowered and made peas. And if they were at that stage now, I could cover them up and probably get a couple more weeks out of them. But whereas they are just pea shoots at this point, I think this is gonna be it, but I can still harvest these and use them uh, in salads because they're super delicious. And then what have I got under here? So under here, I've got some really amazing big heads of lettuce. So these are also semi-frost tolerant. I have, don't see any damage on them, especially with this row cover on top, which is really fantastic. I've also got some hackeroy turnips here. So the hackeroys are um, pretty juicy and wet. So I would say I'm going to pull these out pretty quickly, um, probably in the next couple of days before the weather gets too, too, too cold. Um, I don't really want them to freeze in the ground, but they're looking pretty good. 
I can keep them a little bit longer in here and maybe they're going to get a little bit bigger. And I just use this floating row cover and clothes pegs to hold it on and I find that works really well.